Good day, classes. Welcome to Dr. Hubert's welcome meeting for fall 2020 for History and Systems of Psychology, Psych 400 for sections D01 and D1. Today's agenda. Well, first of all, we want to go ahead and do some prep work for our Zoom sessions that we hope to have real soon. Uh, so we'll go over a little bit of practice ideas as to how you can get around Zoom when you actually uh, engage the system. Then we'll talk about introductions. I'll introduce myself. You guys are introducing yourselves on the uh, welcome course introductions on the Canvas site. Then I'll walk through some select items through the syllabus walkthrough. Then a quick run through of Canvas uh, units or modules that are on your uh, Canvas site. Then we'll have some time for questions. And of course, you can put, post the questions in the discussion forum where this video will be posted. First, getting around Zoom. Uh, by now, most of you have probably had some experience with Zoom. You may be more expert at it than I am, for sure. Uh, but you can see this common bar at the very bottom of the Zoom screen. You have mute at the far left, stop video, uh, participants, and chat. So the mute obviously will mute your microphone or make it active so you can make it ask a question. Video, you can not show video, uh, but if you do want to show video, uh, you can unselect that so that you have video showing. Uh, otherwise, you can stop videos that indicates here. The participants will show how many participants are there, and of course, you may have the ability to chat with your instructor or with other people who also in that particular Zoom meeting. Now, a little bit about myself. My name is Anthony Hubert. I'm a doctor of psychology. I am trained primarily in two basic areas, uh, social psychology, which is how we are influenced and influence other people, and industrial organizational psychology, where we use psychological understanding, uh, theories, etc., in order to uh, make organizations run more smoothly, as well as industry and business. I am from this particular area. I'm a North Carolina native from the Raleigh area. Uh, my current major, of course, I, I don't have a current major, but it was psychology. Uh, and you know my two primary areas of, of focus, social psychology as well as industrial organizational psychology. Uh, I am doing some research now. I hope to continue to research as well as to sharpen continually my skills in this particular arena. So let's go ahead and start with the syllabus walkthrough. As you've seen with just about every class here, we go over this information to make sure you know how to contact us. Uh, you have my name there. Uh, the courses that we're talking about here is Psych 400. Uh, I have two systems uh, classes this semester, D01, a converted face-to-face -to, -face to an online, and D1, the online only. So my office, my physical office location is in the Butler Building and Suite 241, and I'm in Office A. This is a three credit hour course, and my office hours are going to be from Wednesdays 4 to 6 p.m. and any other time by appointment. This class will only meet online. You have my phone number there where I can be reached. Uh, the phone will ring to my cell phone, so I don't miss any phone calls that way. Now, syllabus walkthrough, looking at Zoom meetings and recorded lectures. Uh, there are a few technical difficulties at the beginning of this semester, unfortunately, when it comes to Zoom. So uh, I have not done Zoom uh, too much for these classes this semester, but I do a lot of recorded lectures, and that's what this is here. So two ways I want to be able to communicate with you, uh, at least uh, me talking with you, uh, and hopefully a little bit later when we are able to meet and talk and see with each other in real time. These recorded lectures will be provided by way of providing you information about key topics and ideas and, and things that I want to make sure that you have understanding of. At any time when we do have a Zoom meeting scheduled, uh, those will be announced via Canvas as well as email, and I'll try to do it in multiple ways to make sure that you have understanding that we have a meeting scheduled. If you cannot make a meeting, that's okay. I will attempt to record those sessions as well. But also, I am planning on offering multiple sessions for at least two time frames for a particular Zoom meeting if I think deem it very important for us to have them. All right, the course description. 
Uh, History and Systems of Psychology is a survey of the development of psychology and historical and social cultural perspective. It is a review of the major historical and contemporary systems of psychology and their relationship to the philosophy of science and to the selection of problems and methodologies. So we're going to go way back, I guess, into our history to look at those roots and foundations of psychology, particularly when it comes to the areas of philosophy. The textbook for this course is Farrell, Martin Farrell's course uh, is Historical and Philosophical Foundations of Psychology. We're still in the first edition. The learning outcomes. Let's read a few of these to get the feel for what we are hoping to accomplish at the end of the semester. So upon completion of this course, students will be able to do some of the following items here. Analyze the philosophical background from which the various schools of thought in psychology evolved. Describe the foundational research concepts that are utilized in current research, for example, operational definitions and intervening variables. Number three here, create a narrative of the view of how science progresses, including the idea of empiricists, Popper, Kuhn, Lakatos, and Farabend. Outline the arguments stemming from the thoughts of the philosophy of mind proposed by Descartes, Locke, Berkeley. Let's skip down a little bit more here. Demonstrate the relationship between Hume's concepts of impressions and ideas. Discriminate between the various schools of thought and psychology, structuralism, functionalism, gestalt, and behaviorism. So those are some of the learning outcomes that we hopefully will be able to achieve once we have finished this course. Now, we have all these learning outcomes. What do you need to do in order to master these learning outcomes? Well, it should be noted that students are expected to spend at least six hours a week beyond, quote, classroom instruction on the following activities to master the course learning outcomes. First of all, we have to read and take notes on the identified chapters of the textbook, associated supplemental lecture notes, and any supplemental reading material. So what this is really highlighting is the idea that when you read a chapter, you want to take notes on the chapters to help to solidify the knowledge. View and take notes on identified videos. Gather and organize relevant information to utilize for understanding the material. Communicate with fellow students on identified topics via discussion forums. Gather and organize relevant information for the completion of course essay assignments and so on. Now, here are the course components. There are going to be five tests for this particular course. The weights for these tests will be equal 40% of the final grade. You'll get one attempt per module test. There are 18 chapters and therefore 18 chapter homework quizzes for this course. For those, you'll get multiple attempts per chapter quiz, and they will cost, or not cost, but they will be weighted 35% of the course. Then we have the six essays that we're going to be doing for this course, which will count for 20% of the final course grade. And there's going to be an essay rubric provided here in this presentation. It's also included, obviously, in your syllabus. There will also be anywhere from three to ten discussion forums and or activities Okay, and they will be 5% of the course's final grade. And there's also a discussion room provided here as well. Now, when it comes to discussion forums, uh, why do we do them? Well, discussion forums in my class are designed to assess your ability to address and communicate on topics relevant to the diverse areas of psychology, and two, to generate and, and exchange ideas with your peers. Should be noted that before you read any post, uh, you'll have to post yourself. A couple things when it comes to instructions. Posts should be spread over several days, not all in one day. You should make at least four posts, one original post responding to the question, and three responses to classmates' posts. Post should be more than great post or good job, etc. Post should uh, be a complete idea or thought. And be sure to address the question asked and or follow the instructions provided. Uh, 
So I will be looking as one of the key ingredients of judging your performance here is that one, not all the posts were done in one day, and that you have an original post that responds to the item, the question at hand, and you have responded to at least three other items posted by your fellow students. Now, by way of discussion form guidelines, these are just some ideas to take into consideration as you post. Uh, were the requested items clearly and adequately answered, indicating proper understanding of this topic? Was the item addressed in a way that indicates the effort of the writer to provide a thoughtful and considered response? And were examples provided and were instructions followed? So all of these things are many questions here will go into assessing and judging your performance on any discussion forum. And the other one here, is the writing clear? Was the writing clear and easy to follow? Was it free from, write, from errors? Those types of things. So again, this is just used as a guideline to help me think through the process of how it is that I, I grade your performance when it comes to discussion forums. Now a little bit about essay questions. Uh, essay questions where you will answer provided question or questions thoroughly in a separate word document or equivalent that demonstrates your understanding of the topic material this document will then be uploaded to canvas and again this will be 20 percent of your course grade all six of them together 20 percent of your grade although this is not a formal paper it is important that you proof the brief paper for grammar clarity word choice spelling spelling and utilize quality sources and properly cite the materials and we do have this uh, rubric that we'll show uh, in this presentation it's also included in your uh, syllabus uh, in your canvas site additional instructions are also provided with samples on your canvas site as well Now, when it comes to uh, essay details, as well as anything that may be a written document that you need to upload uh, to this particular course, all assignments requiring documents to be submitted by students are required to have a cover page with the following information. Okay, so we have the name or title of your assignment, uh, the course here, Site 400 History and System. You can also provide your section number there as well. Present it to me, Anthony Hubert, your name, Department of Psychology, Federal State, and then a uh, date. Why this is important? Uh, part of the process that I utilize to review documents, and particularly your essays, I, I know it sounds old school, but I print them all out, and that way it's easy for me to be able to identify whose paper I'm actually grading here and being able to not have to hunt it down again. All right, so that's the way the front cover page should look. All right, looking now at the essay rubric uh, we have here. So this short paper essay rubric here is what I utilize to grade a lot of my papers. You can see the ratings go from four, three, two, one. Okay. And we have the assignment basics. One, instructions to follow. All instructions for the essay or short paper were followed versus instructions not followed at the very end. Sources slash articles. Multiple quality sources used and discussed adequately or at the opposite end, uh, no additional sources used beyond textbook or notes. Summary. We go down to theme and flow. How well does the paper read or the essay read? It's well organized, demonstrates logical sequencing and structure or no organization or sequencing or structure. We have background, foundation, and understanding. Understanding of the content is demonstrated for all topics discussed. Detailed conclusions are reached from the evidence offered versus not so. Understanding of content not demonstrated from the evidence being offered. And then, of course, we have the reference sheet. Uh, information is cited properly in an APA format versus not being done so. So there is obviously some wiggle room and some subjectivity when it comes to assessing your rating in these particular areas. So we go over assignment basics, then the summary, and then the final one uh, looking at the presentation, the length. Now normally here uh, the length of these essay papers, it sounds really harsh but it's not really. We're talking about five pages of content for the most part here uh, and this is going to be double space and it can be rather loose in judging the five pages uh, my experience has been five pages or so seems to really cover the material really really well uh, and addresses all the items if it's a little short of the five pages and you really hit everything it should not be that big of a deal 
all right but we do have this listed here by way of length to give me some basic guidelines of what to look for but of course as I read the paper I can make some adjustments to that format here we're looking at APA uh, font, font spicing, uh, spacing and APA format are correct and so on versus no APA things are being followed whatsoever Grammar, okay, this also can be tied to the idea of flow. How easy does it flow? Uh, usually if you read a paper and it doesn't slow you down by uh, grammatical errors, it flows really well, that's good. But you can almost realize that there's going to be some sort of issues with, with style or grammar uh, when you are being... Uh, the flow is being interrupted as you read your paper. So the basic idea here is just to review your paper, your essay, uh, to make sure that it flows well, that there's no obvious grammatical errors in it and what, whatever. Okay, there we go. So now let's look at the other syllabus walkthrough here. A couple of other items I wanted to cover. There are five modules in this course. Each unit or module will identify assigned chapters, provided lecture slides, and select video links and so on. Each unit or module will include a quiz homework assignment, uh, may include a form question or questions, and other assignments for the unit, uh, including the unit exam or module exam. So here's just a snippet from your syllabi. Uh, looking at a more generalized type of schedule that we have here uh, for the course. So we have week one, which we're currently still in, going from August 3rd to August 9th, where we have the course orientation and overview, introduction, syllabus review, which we're doing now, how this course works by way of expectations, as well as what we're doing now. Week two, starting next week, uh, per the uh, creation of this particular video here, uh, August 10th through 16th, we'll be focusing on chapter one, uh, lecture notes for that chapter, as well as quiz items and other things that we'll see that's more detailed uh, on your Canvas site. So this first chapter uh, starts the first part of this textbook and this course focusing on the philosophy of science. Then we move to next week, chapter two, we'll be looking at Thomas Kuhn and scientific revolutions. And then finally, we'll be looking at chapter three during week four, uh, Lakatos and Farabend, uh, looking at research programs and anarchism. Okay, uh, we'll see during this particular uh, module, we do have an essay assignment there, which will be covering chapters one through three. And at the very bottom here, we see the module one exam. So let's look at the Canvas unit or module run through here. We have here module number one uh, going from August 5th to August 30th. So we see week one, August 3, week one. Uh, course orientation, which we're doing now. Uh, we have the on the far right here of assignments, activities and assignments and to-dos. We have the welcome and orientation form, which I see many of you have already participated in already. Usually the way I have it is the assignments or to-dos, those things which are really required of you to do to complete. I want to make sure you review it or watch it. They'll be highlighted in yellow. Okay. Week 2, August 10th, we have uh, Philosophy of Science. This is the start. This is Chapter 1 uh, where we have Karl Popper's video. There's another one too on Karl Popper's falsification video. You don't have to watch it necessarily, but it is there and can provide you with some great information. And then we have chapter one quiz homework. Again, you will have multiple attempts for these particular quiz homeworks. Going back to the middle column here of topic chapters lecture notes, we see at chapter one, we have lecture notes set one and set two. These are lecture notes the supplemental lecture notes that go along with the topical areas, areas for that particular chapter. Now let's go continue looking at this. So in week three, we'll start focusing on chapter two. Uh, we have Kuhn's structure of the scientific revolution and Kuhn's paradigm shift. Uh, we have the notes indicated by set number three notes for chapter two. And we have, of course, chapter two quiz homeworks. All right. Now, a note about due dates. Uh, the due dates are going to be a week out. So for example, uh, chapter two quiz homework should be done usually by August 23rd per this instruction here. But all this stuff will still be available until the test is completed.
So in week four, as we're doing chapter three, we see we have some stuff that you can review that may be very important for you, like the tower argument. We have the chapter three quiz homework assignment with multiple attempts. And then we have essay uh, number one that I mentioned previously when we're looking at the schedule for the syllabus. On the syllabus, we're now looking at the same schedule, but on Canvas. This assignment for essay number one uh, is going to be covering chapters one through three. And then you see here, one thing I wanted to make note of, the modular unit ends August 30th, but there's a little bit of a lag time uh, because we give you a little bit of an extra day for the test, and that will be August 31, uh, will be the due date, 11.59 p.m. usually, for tests uh, to be completed. So August 31st, 11.59 p.m., test one uh, should be completed. So that gives us the main things that I wanted to cover by way of orientation for the material here. So we got some info on getting around Zoom, it's a little bit of that. I made my introduction to you, you're making your introductions on the uh, Canvas site. Uh, we did conduct a syllabus walkthrough. We reviewed also uh, what the structure is for the slash table syllabus uh, schedule uh, on the Canvas module, Canvas unit format online. And of course, if you have any questions, you can ask and post those questions on this Canvas site, and I'll be available to try to get back to you. If you have any other questions that you don't want to post on the Canvas site, you can email me directly.